you know, mo almost, I think all the pitchers, well, Bard as a reliever, uh, the relievers are fine. They can, they can be fine. I mean, you know, as we've talked about, starting pitching is, is really for me the, the requirement for the six weeks to really feel good about the stamina, the, the volume of throwing that in, they increasingly get as you go through spring. Position players can get ready and relievers can get ready. But you're a little bit crossing your fingers, right? Because of that. Um, I just, you know, I worry about the, I worry about the starters. I like all managers and general yeah. managers, right? You worry about the health of your team, right? I mean. Any, anybody on this list uh, having have any problems other than just travel issues? No. I mean, like. Uh, well, no. Bard, I don't think it's a visa situation, but. What, what, yeah, I, I don't know. Okay, he's it's, just not here yet. I, uh, I'll ask him tomorrow when I see him or tonight when he gets here. I'll say what happened. Nick Roke wants to know why you're late. <laughs> <laughs> uh, roster wide, uh, any problems? Is everybody healthy? Are we still house, can house cleaning? Yeah. We're still uh, roster wide, wise, we're fine. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's, uh, it, it, I guess, after the house cleaning, kind of piggyback on what Kevin said. It is a little bit of a shorter camp. Um, as you said, maybe not everybody is here. Do you feel like schedule wise, you're able to get in what you need. I know because a couple of years yeah. ago you only had three weeks. I right. think this you have a little bit. More and that was time. and that was, you know, by ourselves, right? right. Playing inter squad games. Yeah. So that's a little, uh, it's a little different. But this is more normal with a shortened. Uh, I think we have 19 or 20 games scheduled. In a normal spring, you have closer to 30. But you have time to really you know, prepare your players physically. You know, this is just a little trickier, but we can do it. You know, players this day and age are uh, taking care of themselves year round. Players are working uh, efficiently more than ever, all professional athletes. Guys knew what they were up against, mm -hmm. right? Uh, through all this, through all these negotiations. So, uh, they're ready. I mean, what, what what we've seen the last couple of days, the guys who are here, some of our informal workouts, they look great. Uh, the pitchers have been throwing, but it's different, right? I mean, a lot of guys have been throwing, but indoors, you know, off wooden mounds, off uh, astro turf type mounds. Some have been able to throw outside. Uh, some have been able to throw outside and face hitters. <coughs> some, is, some have faced hitters indoors in a cage, uh, but you know, when you're out here, it's different, right? And you're you're fielding bunts, you're covering first, you're uh, you're shagging in the outfield, you're you're in spikes for a couple hours. I mean, those are. I mean, you and I told the guys earlier. You know, it's, you know, one of the things we talked about is the the baseball shape yeah. that we have to get into. And um, also, this is a little bit different. Sometimes in spring training. You will get an addition. A lot of teams, there are a lot of big free agents out there sure. that could really transform lineups. Um, how, how exciting is that for you? Thinking, hey, maybe something could happen. Well, I think that I, I think all teams are in that, you know, that mode now that their rosters are not finalized. And I know that you know without you know all managers and other, you know, we're we're engaged. I'll put it that way. Mm -hmm. Uh, as are other teams with, with players. Because like you said, Thomas, there's a lot of free agents out there. And and we're doing uh, our best to try to make that happen. I know you're in the loop, obviously, on all this stuff, but I mean, stuff is moving fast. It's moving fast, right? It's moving very fast. You've seen it with us, right? Right, the last couple of days. Yeah. So do you, you know, when you started gaming out your plans, uh, I guess more longer term. Are you just putting everything on pause until you know? Not really. No, not on pause. But no. you know, it's just like anything. It's just you know, when something happens, you you make a you make the quick adjustment and you keep going. Whether it's a you know a trade during the middle of the year, whether it's uh, you know players. The thing about a player is their condition for for this type of action, right? They're getting ready they're at home or they're in the valley or they're in Florida, 
They're pra- they're playing. They're practicing. So physically, they're in a good spot. And you know, guys, depending on who the player is, might be a veteran player or uh, you know a lesser service time player. Uh, you know, for them to transition to a new team, it, you know, that's part of what players do. So that I don't worry about that so much. I mean, you got a guy get up. You got to get a player up to speed on. You know some of the processes you do as an individual team, whether it's you know certain fundamentals, certain defenses, certain uh, sign sequences as a you know pitcher catcher. I mean, but you know you find that most players are able to really quickly, adeptly make the transition. How familiar were you with Jose Iglesias before? You know, just from the other side, okay. uh, just from the other side. Uh, you know, he was a longtime American League player with Boston and then Detroit. Then we saw him in Cincinnati mm-hmm. uh, for those two years. Uh, you know, then, you know, just, you know, being a fan, you know, watching baseball, uh, you know, seeing him play. Last year we saw him, we saw the series against the Angels uh, in Anaheim, saw him play. Um, you know, like any of these things, you know, front offices and Executives do their homework. Managers and coaches do their homework too. Do their due diligence on players, and we did that. You know, I made a couple phone calls you to guys I know. You talked to Joe about. Joe's a good friend of mine. Joe and I talk about a lot of things. Okay. <laughs> I did talk to Joe. I've talked to a couple other managers that he had. Mags had him as a young player in oh, Boston. Okay, right. Yeah, Mags okay. had him in Boston right when he came up in uh, thirteen and fourteen or twelve and thirteen. So Mags had him. He's talked to Max. They've spoken. What is your plan for him? Uh, right now, he pencils in as our shortstop. Yeah. I'm, I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. If you can, Pretty. What, uh, what different. You know, there's different leads on pencils, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, different number, two, two, number two. Number two and three. What's the lightest one? The, well, the lightest one would be. So what? In the H's, H seven. Yeah, I'm saying well, but, but probably the heaviest lead. The heaviest Or yeah. you can even that say, would be, you can, that you can would say be, ink. You want to ink them in? What? Do you, yeah, you can ink them in. Yeah, like ninety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, a pencil means it's. But yeah, he's he's, he's, a, he's a he's been a long time major league shortstop. Got it. And maybe down the lineup. <clears throat> no doubt, bat batting. Yeah, probably does. <clears throat> but who knows? I mean, yeah, I'd be. When you yeah. look at it. Who you guys are, especially as a pitching staff, um, the importance of defense, ground balls, and everything like that. How big was it to have? Perfect. If you didn't You're have right. a good choice of getting home runs, but you got to have. A yeah, I think that you know. Again, you look at our our ground ball rate as a pitching staff. We're one of the best in baseball at producing ground balls with our starters. So it's imperative that we have defense. We feel good about. Mac, obviously, what a year he had. Iglesias has proven solid. You know, I think Brendan, you know, Brendan made uh, great strides. Um, you know, I think Hampy moves well uh, in the infield. Um, you know, the guys that we have coming up, right? Uh, whether it's Trejo, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, young Tovar, he's, you know, again, we'll put our eyes on him. Uh, the two veteran guys that we signed, uh, Kyle Holder and Tim Lopes are defenders. So I mean, you know, and Crony the second half. I thought Crony played really well once he got, you know, regular reps in game at first. Uh, I thought he was really good from June on at first. As you look at, you know, he was banged up during the uh, COVID year. You know, didn't play a lot. You know, hurt his knee, and then the year before that, he was in the American League, sort of going back and forth. So, but regular reps prove that he played pretty well. Okay. Can you uh, clear something up? I, yes. I've heard uh, a couple people. I, I can't remember if you said this. I don't think you said this. Some other people or, I think that like to, Tovar defensively is advanced to the point of like maybe even being able. Yeah, to, I, I, mean, I like, I've heard that. I've heard that too. I mean, again, I think all the superlatives that you put on a player at times is unfair, right? Until you really see it, you know. You know, he was an A ball last year. <laughs> right. Uh, and you hear that with other players, other organizations. I, I, I sort of hold judgment a little okay. bit. You know, I think it's more, I think it's fair to the player. Uh, you know, Ozzie Smith, you know, there's no doubt 
out of college was a sp spectacular shortstop. And they, San Diego put him right in the big leagues. Omar Vizquel, uh, you know, saw him up close on personal as a young defender. I mean, yeah, you, you, they just had it. They just had it. Now, you know, this kid, uh, you know, actually, Jose Iglesias had it when he came over when he was 20. I mean, it was yeah. it was that good, uh, and it was noticeable right away. Now, let's, in all fairness to Tovar, let's let's wait and see. But I've heard nothing but great things about the defense. What is the biggest difference for fans who don't know very like yeah. minutely? I think I think the the speed of the game, the speed of the major league game. So, <coughs> in, in simplest terms, the exit velocity off the bat, off a big league bat, as opposed to an A ball bat, is, is harder and faster. So the ball comes off the bat faster. So that so the reaction time is there, uh, has to be there. And also, the in a lot of cases, the speed of the runner, right? Major league speed. Uh, you know, there's fast guys in the minors, for sure. Uh, and there's fast guys in the majors. But you find that most fast guys in the majors are faster than most fast guys in the minors. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's uh, that's the two things. Just the you know that's you know just like the average major league runner is faster than the I think average minor league number. Even though on a scouting scale we all you know we, you know we you, we clock an A ball runner down the line and we and we put a great we you know we know that major league average is. You know, it's four one, four two, whatever it is down the line, and you know we we grade that as major, but still it's just different when uh, you know it's different like when Tatis you know hits a ground ball and runs to first, right. and or the you know the shortstop and uh, De Des Moines hits a ground ball to short. It's just different, yeah. so. You know what I'm saying? I just yeah, speed yeah. of the game, speed of the game. Yeah. So you hear about the, you know, the cl the timing clock of the, of the, uh, of the infielder. I think he has. That. I hope he has that. Right. He'll, but he's going to learn. Yeah. He'll, he might play Thursday. Yeah. yeah I'll throw him out you, there. You, have you seen him? You actually yeah, seen I saw. Him. I've oh. seen him in, on the backfields. Uh, I saw him in instructional league two years ago, and I saw him in the Arizona Fall League. This year. It looks right. Fundamentally. Yeah, it looks right. Okay. Yeah, but, you know, catch up with Stu as we get into this next, you know, couple of weeks and, you know, give uh, give Stu a, an ask. What do you what do you have with Alex Colony? Um, obviously, you guys. I think just veteran that. reliever, right, who's, who's been through it. Uh, 155 career saves. Uh, the guy's a, you know, he's a, he's a pro. And... You know, our scouts liked him, our front okay. office, uh, you know, from, you know, Billy's eyes and their analytic group, everything, you know, it seemed like a good fit to go with with Daniel, with Carlos, with, uh, you know, Tyler Kinley, you know, Stevenson. It just, it, you know, we just want to be as formidable and as deep as possible, right? So that's, I mean, that was the reasoning of it. And, uh, you know, there's a mutual interest. You know, he wanted to come here. Uh, you know, we identified him, so it, it worked out. When you look at some of the guys you signed in the past, whether it was um, Greg Holland, Wade Davis that first year, how big is it? You can keep this? going. Brian Shaw. Yeah, Brian Jake Shaw. Jake McGee. Well, I'm thinking more of uh, Even before I got here. Guys. Okay. For, first of all, how much does setting your ninth inning with a guy like that? Right? And how do you know he's going to be the ninth inning guy? Well, I guess that's the next what question. kind of yeah, pencil no. that are we talking? About? Yeah, no, he's. I think he's part. I think you know he's now pitched in the back end of games in you know leverage situations for a lot of years. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what I like. And you know, uh, from our conversation, not mine personally, but our from what we've heard from you know his camp that you know he just wants to be a part of a good bullpen. He wants to, you know, be instrumental in helping a team win when we have a lead. So do you stage a closer competition in camp? We're, we're I mean, it's a, it's a fair question. But I might not phrase it that way. Guy's got to perform, Thomas. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the 
fifth inning or ninth. You're only as strong as your weakest link. Has that ever been said? My football coach said it. <laughs> Guys, I hate to, I don't want to say cut this short because we've been at it for almost 20 minutes. So I'm not cutting it short, but I do got to go coach.